You've clicked publish and now your app is out there in the wild. Wouldn't you like to just look over a random user's shoulder in, in a socially acceptable way, of course? Or wouldn't you like to look over everyone's shoulder? Connecting an app to App Insights is just a couple clicks and you'll see what pages people are viewing, where in the world they live, or even how long they're staying on a page in individual sessions. Chris Baldwin shows it today and he asks for your help in shaping its future. Today on PowerCat Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Topless from the PowerCat team, and today I'm here with Chris Baldwin from the Power App Studio team. Hey, Chris. Hi, Phil. So let's get into it. We're going to talk about application insights, Azure application insights. Why do we care about this in Power Apps? Sure, great question. So uh, Azure App Insights is an Azure capability that allows developers to add telemetry into their applications. And so that lets them get a lot of information around how their apps are being used, where they're being accessed from, uh, custom error tracing. You can get a lot of information about the usage of your application and the performance of your application from this tool. And so just as a developer who's writing lots of code would want to put that information into their applications, so too will uh, low-code makers using Power Apps as well. And so we've added some integrations that allow you to take advantage of some of those telemetry features and Azure App Insights directly through Power App Studio. So all of this telemetry it's collecting, how do I actually access it? Is it just like a pile of data or do I get some sort of representation? Yeah, one of the great things about Azure App Insights is how it creates, it automatically kind of collates and creates these graphical views for you to see your information. So once you open up the, the, your, your dashboard here with an Azure App Insights, you can browse down to your, your users pane and you can see some graphs and that explain to you from where is your app being accessed, what parts That's of the true. world are they being accessed from, uh, what uh, OS versions is it coming from, what browsers, and so you can start to understand mm -hmm. your predominant browser usage. Beyond that, you can drill into specific sessions uh, individually and start to understand from a timeline perspective how many seconds is the user wow. spending on a screen before going on to the next one. And uh, going even further there, one of the neat features of, of App Insights is how it creates this uh, graphical tree that will show you from an illustrative point of view your end user's pathway through the application. So what screens did they go to from, from what prior screens? And you can start to see the tree of how they actually navigate themselves through the application. From looking at this information around how they get to the screens and how much time they spend there, it's really useful information that makers can use yeah. to prioritize where to make investments. That's brilliant. And I didn't know that you could get down to an individual session. There's a lot of mm -hmm. data, and the aggregation, of course, is super valuable. How right. hard is it to implement this in a Canvas app? Uh, to get this running in a Canvas app is, is really simple. So there's a bunch of stuff that we will start to automatically pipe up to App Insights automatically. And to get that working, mm -hmm. um, all you need to do is create your App Insights uh, instance. You take your instrumentation key. That's going to be your linkage between Azure App Insights and your Canvas application. And then in Power App Studio, you click on App within the tree view, and you paste in the instrumentation key right there in that field save the app and publish it, and that'll automatically get you all the stuff that I just showed you, um, the aggregations and the, and the graphical views, without having to write any code at all. So that's amazing, and we're talking about Canvas apps, but we should all be looking at moving to custom pages. Chris, does this work with custom pages too? This does work within, with custom pages, yes. That's great. Uh, and what if I've got an event that isn't one of those standard ones that you've wired up for me that I want to track? How do I get yeah. that piped into App Insights? Yep, good question. So, you know, in addition to the stuff that we automatically put up there for you, you've got the ability to add custom tracing into your application. And so uh, if you're comfortable with, with writing PowerFX with just a little bit of code here, you can add these trace functions and automatically start sending custom data to App Insights here. So in this example here, uh, I've added a trace function here, and I'm cr I've created a, a custom object here called information, which contains fields for username, Nice. email screen control. And so when that piece of code gets run, that'll get piped up to Azure App Insights and you can then query that using Kusto. Nice, and it works for Monitor too, right? That's a, a bonus for using Trace in your apps. That's exactly right, yeah. And here's an example of what that looks like here. So you can you know, write a Kusto query against the Traces table in App Insights and you can expand this custom dimensions row here. And that's where you're, you'll see on the Azure App Insights console, um, the output of those custom objects that you've defined and that you're tracing in your PowerFX code. Now, what if, say, hypothetically, I'm reporting out to management? These, these guys don't know Custo, right? 
Uh, yeah. Is yeah. there another way I can reveal this data to them? Yeah, totally. So you can, of course, you know, give people access to your, you know, application insights dashboard in within Azure. But a lot of times, like you said, you really don't want to do that. How can you put this information in a, in a format that's going to be a lot more digestible for um, your less technical consumers? Um, because this is all... That's a nice way know, of saying management, Chris. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be diplomatic. Um, because this is all part of Azure App Insights, um, you can directly export these queries and then use them within Power BI. So this shows you here how you can create your custom Cusco query, export it to a format that can be used in Power BI, and then you can use this to create your own Power BI dashboards. And so this is how you can surface some of this information to all sorts of different audiences in the format that, that is most useful for them. Another thing that's really, uh, that can be done uh, that is often not, not well known is you can, using Azure, you can set up uh, alerts, and, alerts and monitors to fire based on some of these custom tracing events. So you can create some intervals and say, if I get more than N number of errors in a particular time frame, send me an alert through my yes. Azure infrastructure and get proactive notifications around what's happening in your application. Wow, that's really powerful. And so I'm sure there are examples then of enterprises that have implemented this and gotten real value out of it. Uh, what have you seen? Yeah, so I mean, customers really love that graphical tree view that shows you the end user's pathway around the application. Um, yeah, I've talked to customers who have uh, been quite surprised about what they've seen there. Everybody has these ideas of how their application is going to be used. Um, but in reality, users kind of make their own pathways, and this allows the maker to get insight into how they're actually actually using it. It's, it's quite a good learning experience. In addition, um, another thing I'll point out around uh, some of the custom tracing is you can um, log errors as well. So for example, using this errors function within PowerFX, you can create uh, a function that will create a custom logging of custom objects, but only when errors happen. So you can use this tracing to trace every button push or just events where an error would occur as well. And so you can start to learn about what things are failing in your application in a very uh, proactive kind of way. That's really cool. Um, so where do you go from here? You, you mentioned that the, you know, you're kind of starting on this. What's coming next to this feature? A couple of things that are in progress now are that we're adding um, a couple new dimensions here. And so you know, you'll start to see some additional data uh, getting input into that table that you didn't already today. Um, and we're also looking at distributed tracing features as well that will allow you to uh, look at information within your traces that will allow you to kind of correlate different service calls across different pieces of your infrastructure. So that's, that's what cool. we have planned and in, in progress as of this moment. And you showed how easy it was to set up, right? It's really just copying your instrumentation key in there. But if someone yep. wants to go see the docs and follow along, where do they go? Yeah, follow the link that's in the notes here. Uh, the, we have uh, pretty good documentation on this feature. It shows you step-by-step -step how to do everything I just talked about today, including a lot of different power effects code samples. Uh, it's really easy to get started, and uh, I encourage you to use it. And moreover, you know, we, we really want to hear your, your feedback. There's so much more we could possibly do with App Insights from the Power Apps Studio side of things. If there's something you want to see or, or capabilities that you think we should be uh, implementing feature-wise, feel free to let us know. Thanks for that, Chris. So the link's in the description, and be sure to tell Chris and team what you want to see in App Insights below in the comments. Thanks for being here, Chris. Thanks, Phil. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everyone.